Good evening, ladies and gents. My name is Richard Sosius. I am here today to, today to present this idea in which most relationships have stages of liking to meeting to the famous breakup. I'm here to describe you the story that was told to me by this high school student just like you and me, where poetry is his escape from his first poem that describes how much he likes this person in his life to the second poem in which he figures out who she really is to the third piece which I describe his last and final feelings during his breakup. The poem was Like by My McGee, Nikki by Dante Bosco, and The First Week of a Breakup by me, describe the basic stages of most relationships. <clears throat> the first one was written to a girl that a student really liked that thought that his physical appearance and his personality couldn't really win her over. So we decided to write a poem, slip it into her bag during class, and hope that she read it. And she did, but it didn't really win her over. <clears throat> but I've heard this poem which, in which he wrote to her, and I shall share it with you today. <clears throat> like by my Mickey. Girl, I like you. I like you like Blue Wells like to say. I like you a whole bunch of a lot. You're a pocket full of awesome. I like you similar to the way pirates and frat boys like Booty, like David Copperfield like to perform grand scale yet lame ass feats of illusions. Like the US government likes to perform grand scale yet lame ass feats of illusions. Like Tesco's and homeboys like to hang, like homeless people and break dance like cardboard. Like two likes three and four likes six, cause five has issues. I like you a whole bunch of a lot and a whole lot more times infinity. Maybe that's starting to dip into the equation of love. Nevertheless, I got a thing for you. Like magnets got for refrigerators. I'm stuck on you, and I like it. I like you in an official metric shitload. I think your body full of soul, and I hope you like me back. Even if it's like dust likes furniture. At least you're all over me. But I guess I'm tired of meeting people who define themselves by what they don't like. I just don't like that. However, I do like holding you. The way your pillow holds your head when you sleep. The way gays, lesbians, transgenders, transsexuals, Mexicans, and Irish people like to hold parades. The way the earth holds the moon and the sun holds the earth and how they constantly spin around each other forever. And even though this metaphor doesn't really make sense with regards to this poem, because that would imply that there would be three of us, which would be awesome. <laughs> you get the idea. In my book, you rock. And I like rocks. Wait, but anyways. And just because I spent an hour or so writing this down doesn't mean you have to like me back. But damn it, I would really like that. <clears throat> After he figured out that the, the poem didn't really work, he was feeling down. So he and some friends went to a club. <laughs> and during the visit, he noticed this dancer. As he got to know her, he seemed interested. But he didn't even know what he was in for. The po this, but he didn't even know what he was in for. This poem describes his feelings of when he met someone very special in his life that turned out to be something he didn't expect. Probably something out of the Discovery Channel. <clears throat> Nikki by Dante Bosco. I once knew this girl named Nikki. I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I mean, she was a dancer. Well, actually a stripper. And that is to say, to see her naked, you'd have to pay. Anyway, one night I was in a devious mood, rendezvous with my boys in the club up the street. Live, totally new girls. 10 bucks a head, 18 and over, must have ID. So there I was, sitting in the seedy joint, sipping flat soda, tripping with fear, wondering, what would my mom think if she would ever caught me here? Then out comes this girl, petite physique. Petite physique, her body was perfect to me, you see? Then there I was, caught in a moment, I'm looking at her, her looking at me. Cancer away, something is strong, I sense as she danced, moving articles of clothing from her body, but not once removed her eyes off of me. And I felt that either she was the greatest dancer in the world, or somehow I managed to touch something special, something real. A connection, something pure, something powerful. A purely powerfully animalistic connection. Now let me continue, I want to get in you, well let me slow down. See, the show ends and she comes and talks to me, and of course I play the shy role. And she bites, and yo, you don't even know the half of it. She winds up up in my crib and see if I can take a stab at it. And we get to this dance, and we, we move together, and we... They're like puzzle pieces, if you know what I mean. Puzzle pieces to an erotic portrait. And then she whispers in my ear, pull my hair. And so I do. And then she says, harder. And not at the roots, but at the ends, because it hurts more. 
but I never wanted to hurt her. I wanted to love her. Tenderly, honestly, mentally, physically. But somehow I didn't think she would let me. And then she says, choke me. Now you know me, I mean, I'm a gentleman, so I try to do it gently. And then she says, harder. And I don't know what to do. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm in this RT SMN documentary of some sort with this girl riding me, pushing me to the limits of my sexuality. And I have to stop for a hot second and say, yo, I don't do that. And that started the wrestling match as we tossed and tumbled around my bed like two lion cubs that play on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, we were like animals. And then she wound up on top of me again, and then she'd say, hit me. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, I have to admit, I was a little lit, I mean high, off her. She intoxicates me somewhere in the back of my mind. I say, what the hell? And with the palm of my hand, I grace the skin on her chin, oh so gently still. And she says, harder. And I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy who hits girls, and I don't even know why this would be getting her off. But we were playing chess, and she put me in check. So I slapped her on the cheek, and we tore each other apart in the dark until we arrived. And yo, I don't know what she saw, but me, I was blinded by white lights, lying naked next to her, quivering. We escaped ourselves and each other. Yeah, I know a girl named Nikki. I guess you call I guess you could say she was a sex fiend, but don't judge me or her. It's just the place I've been. <clears throat> now things were going great for the student and Nikki. But you got to that time in the most relationships where they they either have two choices. Either they break up or they stay together and get married. Things were great at the start, but slowly started to go downhill and eventually led to the breakup. This is how I believe he felt in the first week of his breakup. <clears throat> there is nothing worse than the first week of a breakup. The first week of a breakup is like the first time guys have sex. It's awkward, it's boring. We keep telling each other we're doing fine and it's a lie. First week of a breakup, you're on my mind more than you ever were. So I clean, I exercise, I go out with friends. But you're everywhere. You're at the club where we first met. You're at the school when we got to know each other more. You're at the park where we first had our first date. See, you're on my mind all the time. It's just driving me crazy. I want you to get out. With your kids, jealousy and neglect. Always running around my mind, screwing me over so many times. They, so, they look so much like you. But I have to deal with it. And that's how it's got to be. They say it takes twice as long as it is, twice as long to forget as it was to know. So I'm sitting in my room, talking about five months down, one more year to go. This is for all the women in the room who think that men don't burn. Now when it comes to heartbreak, it's never our turn. It don't matter who or what it is to blame, because the first week after a breakup, alone, always feels the same. And I stand here today to tell you a story of a high school student's basic stages of a relationship. That student was me. And I tell you my story hoping it could be passed on.